Hello, my name is Emmanuel Cervantes Mejia. This is my painting studio. Uh, today we'll be doing a demonstration on how to start your oil painting and also the supplies needed for uh, your project. We'll be talking about the brushes, the different types of paints, mediums, your um, painting surface, uh, canvas, panel. Today I'm going to be doing a demonstration on uh, Arches oil paper, uh, which is a good, good product for uh, for studies or even just like a finished painting. So different brushes you'd be using for, uh, there's a lot of brushes available on the market. Some of the, not really basic ones, but some that you might need is, one is called a bristle brush. They come in different sizes and, and shapes. Um, this one is by a brand called Escoda from Spain. This is a really rough bristle brush. It's usually hog hair. These are really good for um, starting your painting, especially on your canvas where the surface might be like sandpaper. So you want to be using a, a stiff brush to sketch in your, your painting. Another, uh, or one example of a different shape is this is also a bristle brush. And this is called a filbert brush. This has, it's kind of tapered towards the middle and has a little bit of a, of a tip. That's one I'll be using momentarily and those are natural hair brushes. You have other brushes, like this one is a synthetic brush. This one's just a round, number zero Da Vinci brush. Um, another synthetic, really good for, for any process, any stage of the painting. And I have one here that is by a company named Monet, or Monet from France. And I believe this is Mongoose, which is just really soft. This would be really good for glazes. Um, this presentation won't be talking much about glazing, but this is just another example of a brush you may need. Okay, we're going to be talking about um, oil paints. There's a lot of different oil paints available to you on the market, ranging from inexpensive, student grade, to the higher end. Um, I'll explain the difference right now. There are, a student grade is one called Windsor Newton Winton Oil Color. Uh, the reason this is student grade is because it does have um, the medium for this is linseed oil uh, pigment and this also has a, a, an additive to extend the paint. So it's not just pure um, oil and pigment how um, oil paints are traditionally made. And we go up to a little bit of a higher end student grade. This one's a Van Gogh. This is a tube of ivory black. Um, this still ranges from, I believe it's the market, this is like 10 to $14, I know it's a big range, but for a big tube like this. This also has linseed oil, um, a filler, and the pigment. And on the higher end, there's a, a brand called Rembrandt. This one is, um, has driven, or the vehicle is also linseed oil, and it's just linseed oil and pigment, which is if you're gonna be mixing your own pigment at home, that's the only two things you need for an oil color, which is just dry pigment and your vehicle, which would be a linseed oil, walnut oil, um, which takes me to the next brand. One brand I like to use a lot is an M. Graham. This is a tube of yellow ochre, and this only has dry pigment mixed with walnut oil. I prefer walnut oil because it actually, uh, well, it dries a little slower, but also because of the buttery consistency that comes out of just the tube, just how it is. One thing I like to do is I don't like working on a white canvas. I like staining it with a neutral color. In this case, I'm gonna be using Van Dyke Brown uh, with the Winton oil color. Uh, just because it's less expensive and it's just going to be as a stain to, uh, to get rid of the white. The reason why I want to get rid of the white of the canvas, or in this case the, the oil paper, is um, so that I can see the dark and lights uh, rather quickly, as opposed to you can only darken a white canvas, but you can lighten it. So if I have a, a medium value of a neutral gray or brown, I can add a white or a light color and I can see the light color for what it is and I can see the dark and I can relate uh, the two values and paint on from there. So moving on very quickly we're going to be talking about uh, the different products you could use to paint on different surfaces. You have canvases, you have panels, and you have uh, paper that you can use. 
One of the, the most common one is cotton canvas, and I have some right now, let me show you that. This is cotton canvas, and this one's already primed with what we call gesso. This is an acrylic gesso. Um, this, I have rolls of this, you can just uh, stretch it or you can glue it onto a board. Uh, but this works great with the um, acrylics. And um, you can use oils on there, but if you're gonna be doing a commission painting or if you want another surface that um, you can use for oil color, would be, uh, you'd be suited, be better suited with something like oil primed linen. This is um, a lot more expensive, at least double the amount for, uh, for ca cotton canvas. But this one is made from flaxseed and uh, it's really rough. This is what um, old masters would use if they weren't uh, working on board. But the other side, this one's already pre-primed. This is primed with two coats of oil primer. The reason why you want to use oil primer for oil paints is because, um, well, because it already has oil, so it's going to bind and it will sit on top as opposed to an acrylic primer, which is considered universal, but it can, it doesn't necessarily bind with the oil paint because you have acrylic and oil. Um, one is essentially like a plastic or water-based, and we know that oil doesn't mix well with water. Um, you still can use it, it's just, a, it's just really just a preference. Um, I like using the oil primed linen, uh, but that doesn't mean I don't, I don't use the, the acrylic primed cotton canvas, it's just your own preference. So today I'm talking about the Arches oil paper. Uh, this is a nice cotton paper, um, and you have the ability to stain, you can remove the paint, you can, it's just a really nice product to do studies with or just for on uh, finished paintings or commissions, and we'll just move on to another part of this. We'll be talking about mediums. I like using non-toxic mediums in, uh, in my studio. I don't really like having a turpentine, uh, just for personal reasons. I don't like the headaches and whatnot, but anyway, you can get away with doing a painting just using oil. Like here I have walnut oil. Like I mentioned before, I like it because it dries maybe a little slower, um, it also doesn't yellow as much as linseed. If you wanted this to dry faster, you can use something that, it's also walnut oil, but has an alkyd put in there. So it's a synthetic resin that will make your paint dry, dry a little faster. You can have something, certain colors can dry overnight. Some will just take maybe like a whole 24 hours, if not a little bit more. But this is a great product if you want to speed up your, the drying time of your painting. As a solvent, which I usually, I use sparingly, I don't use it all the time. I have this thing called EcoSolve, or EcoSolve from, uh, I believe the company is Natural Earth Paint, and they're, I believe, based in Oregon. And this is a great soy-based, non-toxic uh, paint thinner. I usually don't put it down the drain, but you can. There's, there's nothing toxic about it. I wouldn't be drinking it either way, but still. Uh, doesn't give you, doesn't give you a headache, doesn't have any kind of, I haven't had any allergic reaction to it. Um, but this is great to start off your painting. You can, I'm going to be using this as a demonstration today to stain and also do a drawing on the, on the canvas using paint and a little bit of this thinner. Another thing that walnut oil is useful for, or any oil, is uh, cleaning your brushes. In here, it's a little dirty because I use this a lot is just, I had, took a mason jar and filled it with about halfway with walnut oil. And inside I have a little tin uh, can that I just punched some holes in. And I just use it as my brush cleaner. That's another thing you can use to clean up your brushes afterwards and also clean your palette with, uh, with walnut oil. A neat thing about cleaning your brushes that way is that if you have natural hair brushes, they are conditioned because of the uh, because of the oil. And I'll do a demonstration also how to clean your brushes afterwards using soap and water. You can also use it to clean your palette. And another thing, if you're using a wood palette, like I am here, I have some color already on here, you can use it to clean it and it also conditions your wooden palette. If you're using a paper palette, it doesn't really matter, but it does, it is nice to be able to uh, clean something with just oil. The reason why you can use 
something like walnut oil to, to clean your brushes and your palette is because oil's already in your paint. And um, paint thinner is stronger, but it does, it, it can affect you, especially if you don't like the, the fumes it, it, it gives out. Um, walnut oil just can, if you use it significantly, like in the jar, like I just showed, you can um, really clean your brushes very well. One thing I forgot to mention is uh, like a masonite board that you can use uh, for painting. Uh, this is one you can get, it's already universally primed with like an acrylic gesso. Um, these are really nice too because they're easy, they're easy to frame, it's just an MDF board. Um, you can also build these yourself, getting an uh, MDF or any really kind of wood and uh, We'll have another video to show you how to prepare that specifically so you can use it with acrylic or with oil paints. Um, but this is really nice to paint with. The surface is a lot slicker. So if you're doing something like uh, um, glazing or you want to do layers to get like a really, like a nice glow, not to say you can't get that on linen or canvas, but this is nice because it, it's just really smooth. But it's, again, just preference to see what you would, what you prefer to paint on. So I like using a wooden palette. They have different sizes you can get. Um, I just got one of these uh, from like a uh, local arts and crafts store. Um, works totally fine. The reason I prefer wooden is actually no really specific reason. I just think it's like durable and I don't mind cleaning up. Um, but there are paper palettes. You can um, really use almost anything as a palette. But I just like the, the wooden one. Also, since it's kind of stained um, with my other oil colors, I've had this one for a while. I um, can see the colors a lot better as opposed to if I was to use a white paper palette, I wouldn't really be able to judge. Everything seems a lot darker than it really is. So it's just another option if I like to get a wooden palette. These are great to use. So I'm gonna start off with staining the canvas. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, it's just so that I could be able to judge values um, better. Well, that's the, prefer, the way I like to uh, I prefer to work and I have a value scale that I made here myself going from dark to light. Uh, we'll be using that for the painting demonstration in a few moments but right now I'm just going to stain it and all I'm using is the EcoSolve uh, non-toxic paint thinner. The stain will be with the Winsor Newton Van Dyke Brown and I'll be doing a monochromatic technically grisaille uh, painting of a coffee mug today. Let's get started with that. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to dilute. Get a lot of the thinner with a little bit of paint and best way to see if you got the consist consistency that you'd like or the tone is just put it on. I just want it a little darker, so I'm just gonna put a little bit more of each, the thinner and my color. So there's different techniques in uh, oil painting. For one is wet and wet, which is also called a la prima, which is what we'll be doing today. And this isn't always necessary, it's depending on what you're going for. I like painting more of a muted paintings and I like using a darker stain on my painting surface. And I won't cover it all the way up, I just like to, I almost like paintings to look like paintings, not necessarily like a photograph be kind of like a sketch at first. So this will dry fairly quickly. You can work right on top of it and remove some of the paint using another like a hog hair brush, bristle brush, or you can just let it dry, get a little bit more and do your, your basic outline. And that will be, I'm gonna let this dry and then that will be the second part of this demonstration. Mm -hmm. 